year of Slenton Salvation Army and we are so thankful to you guys for all your support over the years with our Christmas present appeal uh, which looks to support families who are struggling around the Christmas time and just to be able to bless them with gifts for children in what can be a really difficult time of year and um, yeah it's just such a blessing to be able to join together and serve our Nottingham community so just thank you so much for your championing and your support over the years. So this year, Cement and Salvation Army are joining together with our city centre based William Booth Memorial Hall Salvation Army to be able to serve our local families and agencies this year. Obviously, we're aware that 2020 has brought us an extraordinary amount of change and our predictability this year but um, we are having to tweak and do things a little differently but we're still excited to be able to serve families in this way. So we recognise it may be difficult to donate physical toys this year so we set up a Just Giving page um, so we're able to raise some financial support towards a Christmas present appeal. But for those of you who may want to give um, a physical donation, a Christmas gift, um, new and unwrapped, we do have a couple of dates in December where you're able to drop off at our City Centre Salvation Army. Um, the details are on our Snenton Salvation Army Facebook page and there's a number you can call so you can pre-arrange your drop off and make sure everything's done in a COVID friendly way. So we're really also looking forward to joining you online in a few weeks for your service. I just want to say a massive thank you um, again to you all for all your support over the years and we're looking forward to sharing with you. We have lots of love and blessings from Nottingham Salvation Army. Good morning and welcome to our service this morning. Um, as you've seen from that video there, the, um, the Salvation Army are collecting um, toys um, and we normally have a toy service where we collect them and then we give them to the Salvation Army. So as well as what was said there about being able to drop it off at their Snenton um, City Centre um, site, we're also collecting the toys here and as you can see we've got a small collection of toys because um, some people brought some this week so if that was you thank you very much um, I will appreciate that I am sure but um, that little reminder that between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock this coming Tuesday and this coming Thursday um, the church will be open for private prayer and you can also bring along um, a, a new toy gift and then they can sit here they can wait here and then the Salvation Army will come and collect them from us or we'll drop them off I'm not quite sure what's happening yet but they they will get those so this Tuesday this Thursday between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock um, the, the church will be open and someone will, will be here to um, collect any gifts that you have um, it's also the church is sort of giving giving time where um, additional and extra um, monetary gifts for the church can be received so yeah back to the beginning welcome and um, we're glad that you can join us this morning we're going to start off with a couple of songs um now we chose the songs because we thought the reading was going to be one thing and then the reading is something else but they're always relevant um i can't remember what the first one is there what's the first one i'm making melody i'm making melody that's what we're going to do we're going to make a melody well <laughs> Everything within 
The Bible in this morning is Matthew 25, verses 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people from one another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right side and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you as a stranger and invite you in? Or needing some clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me. You are cursed into eternal fire, prepared by the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of my least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment but the righteous to eternal life. Lord bless us the reading. So as I was saying earlier, that's a different reading to the the one that we thought we might be having today. Um, The one that we thought we might be having, which we will have at some point in the future, was going to be the parable of the talents, um, i.e., using what you have, not just your talents, money, etc. Um, using what you have, feeding those that are hungry, giving to those that, that have less. So um, the message today is going to be provided by uh, Andy, Andrew Scholes, um, who actually recorded the, the message for us. And when Andy, Andrew here gives me the thumbs up, he's giving me a thumbs up, he's going to push play and I'm going to go and sit down and watch it myself. All right. Hello, it's good to be able to uh, share with you today some thoughts around our Bible passage uh, this morning as an 
and as I'm sure you'll be able to tell, uh, I'm not in church recording this live, uh, and that's because I made a bit of a cock up on my work rotor. And so when you're watching this, I'll probably be somewhere uh, in the QMC at work, but uh, never mind. Nonetheless, it is good to be able to share with you in this way. As I'm sure you're aware, uh, the year is marching on, and this particular Sunday is designated as Christ the King Sunday. The Sunday before we get to the beginning of Advent next week, Advent is that season of preparation and of waiting. But this Sunday, Christ the King Sunday. And it's good to be reminded of this, that throughout the generations, throughout the rise and fall of nations, whoever happens to be in the White House or Downing Street or any other um, place of authority at any given moment in history, through all the ups and downs of our own lives and the strange times we're living in at the moment, Christ is King. And he's still inviting us to follow and he's still inviting us to demonstrate and to live out the implications of his reign in our lives, both personally and together. And this morning we're going to be looking away. We've heard read and we're, we're thinking about a fairly well-known section in Matthew's gospel that comes at the end uh, of a chunk of Jesus's teaching about the coming of the son of man. And this chunk of teaching started back at the beginning of chapter 24. And there are various parables uh, that Jesus shares that really illustrate different aspects of that coming and how we are perhaps to live in response to that. One of the things that it's helpful to, I think, bear in mind as we read the Bible in general and as we read the parables and as we read the Gospels, that we remember that, that Jesus is the main character. And I know it sounds obvious, but often we read the Bible as though we were the main characters. And yes, we're involved in the story and we play our part as followers of Jesus. But Jesus is always the main character. And I mentioned this phrase, son of man. Son of man is one of the titles that Jesus gives to himself when he wants to in some way describe who he is. It gives hints but it's also sufficiently vague to allow Jesus to fill that title himself with what it means to be the son of man. And the coming or the advent of the Son of Man in these parables is seen as the one who will be shown finally as the true ruler over creation. A ruler who isn't self-serving, but who rules by serving others, who comes in humility as a baby, as we'll remember in a few weeks from now. And a ruler who ultimately rules by giving up his own life for the sake of others. Administering a rule that isn't oppressive, that isn't unjust, but a rule that leads to the ultimate flourishing for all. And this is the sort of picture that we're given in our reading this morning. Uh, if you want to uh, turn again with me to... Matthew chapter 25, and we're looking at verse 31 to the end of the chapter. Here, the Son of Man, says Jesus, takes his place on the throne of his glory. The throne as a, a sign of reigning and ruling. And all the nations are gathered before him. Imagine that for a moment. Try and picture the scene. Scan through the nations of the world in your mind, if you can. The ones that are perhaps more 
prominent and the nations are all too easily get overlooked the haves and the have nots those nations that seem to be inverted commas prospering in world terms and those nations where life is tough and it's hard all the nations gathered before the throne of the son of man king jesus the servant king the crucified and risen one and as the story unfolds there is a separation that takes place here between the sheep and the goats and if you're anything like me immediately you jump to the question which one am i when that day comes which one am i going to be and the sheep are welcomed and the goats are not and we think perhaps i hope i'll be a sheep when this day comes but what if that is to miss the point of this parable because that's making us the focus around which this story revolves it seems to me as i've prepared uh, this week that there are two legitimate ways to take this scene and because um you read some commentators they'll take one stance and other commentators will take another stance that seems to tell me that it's not exactly clear just what jesus was getting at but it seems that there are two legitimate ways what happens if the followers of jesus are neither the sheep or the goats but in fact are the ones that jesus later describes as the least of these the ones that the sheep and the goats act towards the least of these brothers and sisters he describes his followers in this he describes the, the disciples in that sort of way earlier in matthew's gospel so it's not beyond the realms of possibility for followers of jesus in this story to be neither the sheep or the goats but in fact the least of these you see matthew is writing first and foremost to a community of jesus followers in the first century facing opposition and hardship because they're following jesus some of whom probably would have been imprisoned for following jesus and to hear this story read to hear that jesus the son of man comes and takes his place on the throne to symbolize who is the true king and that all the nations will one day stand before jesus brings a sense of hope for these first readers in the midst of their present struggles it says to them that the struggles won't go on forever things will one day be set right in the world this is the judging of the nations based on their interactions with and attitudes towards the overlooked the broken i.e those who make up christ's community the church and this king this son of man jesus so identifies himself with these very people with the overlooked with the broken with the forgotten he stands in solidarity with them so much so that to serve them to provide for them to visit them is to provide for jesus is to serve jesus is to visit jesus he hasn't in other words forgotten them or given up on them in their hardship that's perhaps one way that we might take this scene the followers of jesus are the least of these in a context 
when to be a follower of Jesus was hard and it was costly, perhaps more so than it is for us today, living as we do in Britain. But go to other parts of the world and they will be facing these sorts of struggles for following Jesus. Another legitimate way, perhaps, to understand this story, what happens if we're all both the sheep and the goats? Notice that both those on Jesus's right side and his left side are surprised to find themselves there. It's not that they were doing the things that they were doing in order to kind of earn which side they, they were on. That that wasn't that's not the sense of it. Both those on his right and those on his left are surprised to find themselves where they do. They're not expected to find the Son of Man among the stranger, or among the hungry, or among the imprisoned, or among the marginalized, or among the overlooked. But nonetheless, as they served or failed to serve these people, they failed or they served Jesus. And the point, perhaps if we understand it in these terms, that there's perhaps both the sheep and the goats in each of us, the point is to encourage, if I can say, more sheepness to those around us who are in need and less goatness as we continue to follow King Jesus. And as I said, the various commentaries I've read this week seem to indicate that there's room for both understandings. So what might we take away as we reflect on this passage together? Perhaps this, there is going to come a day when the nations, all the nations, not just those that make it into the news, but all the nations will stand before King Jesus, where some of the values of the world will be challenged. And this doesn't make us smug, as we're still called by King Jesus to love our enemy, to pray for those who may persecute us. But it does provide a hope that things will one day be set right. And there'll be some surprises, just as there was when Jesus came the first time. Who expected to find a king in an animal trough in Bethlehem or on a wooden cross in Jerusalem? And in the meantime, this story assures us that Jesus continues to stand with us, come what may, even as we move towards the time when we celebrate the coming of Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus isn't just Emmanuel at Christmas, by the way. This is who he is, God with us. Finally, we're reminded again that contrary to all other displays of power and authority and rule, Jesus is the true king and one day his reign will come to completion even as we commit to live our lives under that reign in the here and now. Let's pray together. Father, we're grateful for your word to us uh, this morning and we ask that you would speak personally and corporately to us as we seek to follow King Jesus along the road of discipleship, come what may. May something that we've considered this morning take root in our lives and bear fruit. In the name of Christ, who is the King. Amen. And shall we continue in our prayers? 
Lord, we are here this morning with open hands and hearts, ready to listen to you. It's not the same, Lord, not meeting in our churches like we used to before this pandemic. We miss the togetherness, the singing, the fellowship, the sharing around your table. Yet out of it all, perhaps we are learning something new, that we can praise and worship you in our sitting room. Living wherever we are. We pray for the community that we live in, for those in need. May we hear their call. For those suffering, may we find a way to reach them. And for those whose eyes need to be open to your love, may we show them how to reach you by the way we live out our lives. Today especially we pray for Jan. Give her strength to fight on. Help her to grow stronger every day, knowing that your love surrounds her and the knowledge that she is safe in your hands. We pray for all of those suffering as a result of COVID-19 those who have lost loved ones and those who are still battling in hospital and for all the doctors and nurses working tirelessly to provide care. We pray for Andy Scholes, our minister this morning, as he ministers in the QMC. May he feel your closeness this morning. Jesus, our good shepherd, support us when we suffer and bring healing when we are wounded. Strengthen each one of us so that we might strengthen others and be with them in all that we face together. No matter what is happening around us, Lord, help us to grow in our faith, held in your love and guided by your Holy Spirit so that all we are and do may be to your praise and your glory. Amen. And as we approach the season of Advent, we rejoice in the King who we worship. And this next song was recorded by people from across the world. And it was put together by Roger Jones and the team at CMM. See if you can recognize any of the people involved and think of the coming Advent as you listen to, O oh, Worship the King.
breeze through the air, it shines in the light. It's Nope, didn't recognise anybody. <laughs> oh. Do you know, just before the service started and we were um, looking through what the, the reading was that we weren't expecting, um, um, Yvonne said, um, oh, I like goats. Goats are nice. I much prefer goats to sheep. And I know uh, that my wife, who will be watching at home, uh, hello, Christine, um, she really likes sheep. And there was a little part of me that just thought, which is better, goats or sheep? There's only one way to find out. That's a Harry Hill reference. No, no getting that one at all. Oh, well, apologies. <laughs> it basically gets two things to fight. But it was quite nice, actually, to have, the, um, uh, to have Andy basically giving a um, sort of a different take on the reading and making the point that, yeah, maybe it's not about who's a sheep and who's a goat at all. So um, the great thing about having the readings and having things going on, um, the messages on, on video, is that you can actually go back and watch again. So um, I will be going back and I'll be watching that one again because I thought that was a really, uh, a really interesting uh, take on it. Anyway, we've just got one more song to do before we finish, um, which is actually quite an old one, um, but it was new to us when we were looking through it um, and choosing one last week. So it's a bit upbeat. Um, so make some space, get around, have a bit of a boogie. All right. <laughs> Yeah. 
fill us up and send us out in the power of your name. Fill us up and send us out in the power of your name. Fill us up and send us out in the power of For your goodness and generosity in giving us all we need, help us to praise you, O God. In every circumstance of life, in good times and bad, help us to serve you, O God. In love and faithfulness, with all that we have and all that we are, help us to serve you, O God. In our plans and work for ourselves and for others, and in every thought and word and deed, by the power of your Holy Spirit, this week may we live for you, O God. Amen.